Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over all the changes that are coming in year eight in Rainbow Six Siege. There's a lot of very exciting things that I'm really excited to talk about. So we're going to go over all that today. But first, we're going to watch this video here going over all of the changes. And I, I watch my videos in like two to three X speed. So allow me, allow me to slow this down for you guys, okay? Allow me to slow this down a little bit. Let's go back. Let's go back. Stage with Brava. A new Brazilian attacker. Who new Brazilian attacker. Drone, a dastardly device capable of so, defender electronics. I'll let him explain. Destroying them from a distance or changing their allegiance entirely. Imagine a defender triggering a Capkin trap. Ooh. Or getting slowed by Malusi's Banshee device. Can you imagine? Imagine an attacker causing chaos with an on-site maestro turret. Oh, you're maestro defusing situation. and you get... Killed this by your own maestro. That Brava <laughs> is to you. Oh wow! It's coming soon. Ooh, the Capcans. Get is the Clutch Drone. It's a new observation tool that we are bringing to the attacking team. It's a observation tool that focuses on stealing and over. How is it going to work with the Bandit? I guess it just. It's a drone. Just so destroys it. Okay. So for you some things, it just around, destroys it. Drive with it, and you can also shoot. When you shoot at a electronic device, you can steal them from the defender team. That's crazy. Our experienced players will be able to do a lot of crazy things with this. You can steal a Capkin trap. You can steal a Yokai. Oh, that's going to be so powerful. Defender gadget that you can turn against them. So obviously, there's wow, a that's going to be so limits. strong. The sky is the limit here. This is going to be really or cool, guys. I'm excited. It's a safe way to explore new maps, get to know interactions. And comment down below if you guys are excited for this new operator. I'm hyped so far. This looks like a lot of fun, honestly. Brava brings two primary uh, weapons. We have two weapons. the Para 308 and the Cam okay. RS. We have Not the Assault bad. Rifle. It's high damage. The Para is pretty good. Fire, it really is. That's we probably what you're going to run. As the other option? The Dean must kind of troll. Side, in my opinion. This is the one you want. For the secondary weapons, we have the Super Shorty and the USB 40. You okay. We You're definitely rocking the super shorty. Utility. We can create some rotation holes for drones. You can slip by the defenses with this. Or you have the USB 40, which is a reliable pistol. If you want to move fast, you want to catch up to your team, that's the one you want to use. For right. Generic gadgets, Probably the super shorty, the guys. And the small grenades. The you know what, though? Athena or myself, we're actually one of either the world champs or pro players that we have help us make videos for Six Shot Academy. We'll be soon releasing a video in Six Shot Academy on this new operator bravo so make sure you guys check out six shot accounting with the link in the description if you guys aren't sure what it is it's a community project built by athena and i it's a place it's also it's a course as well as a discord community center where you can join with like-minded players and do things like uh looking for a group uh play rank together form teams etc etc athena and i are in there daily answering any questions you have we hop into calls every single night we spectate, do VOD review, one-on-one -on -one coaching, play ranked, TMs, etc., etc. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, then uh, check the link in the description, Six Shot Academy. We'll be making a video on Bravo very soon, on the course part of the, but we want the uh, that you're safe. project. So you will be able to use a Claymore for this one, or we have the small grenade. The small grenade Claymore is smokes, okay. Noise that draws a lot of attention. That'll be interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards you'll probably run smokes more often. But we'll see. That's really cool. And one armor attacker here. It's that was really cool. They took the Maestro cam and then used it to destroy the bandits. That's smart. That's actually crazy. Imagine like on consulate, right? Imagine you're on consulate and people often bring Maestro or like Echo on consulate. Imagine if you're able to take like an Echo drone or a Maestro cam for example, and you could just like shoot the Cades off the top of the wall where you can uh, shoot the bandits off the wall, etc. the mutes. We That's going to be crazy. Just like shoot the ADSs in attacker. sight, start like picking away the utility. So That'd be crazy. Now, like the defense is going to have to think about the operators they pick, you know, like they're going to have to really be, be careful. The first synergy that we can see is IQ. You have this ability to track all of the electronic devices and turns out that Bravo can hunt and steal those. So you want IQ to scout ahead and Bravo to execute. Okay, so IQ can one of the things differentiate like whether it's hacked or not. Here we are proposing Bravo and IQ. 
dispatchers and the operators that have access to the generic uh, EMP grenade can allow the clutch drone to move forward if there's a pest or a mute jammer. Smart. In you can also do that with like if you a secondary EMP. EMP. So I feel like this is like, yeah, it's true, so but also like these critical important walls to open. You, you can get around that a lot of ways. Because there's electricity or mute jammers on those walls. You can send the clutch drone to shoot those gadgets and remove them, but there's also creative ways of doing it. You can steal a maestro, use the maestro to deny those devices. That's the kind of- That's what I was saying. Exactly nice. that, but just on consulate. So there you go. So this is a great way to counter Brava. Either you can spot Brava when she's droning. Solus. She's vulnerable. And you guys know you I love Solus. coming in to steal your gadgets. Muzzy mm. is an interesting counter here. We have a two-way relationship. You can yeah. steal the best and do all of the crazy things. And then they could just steal it back, but right? You can also steal the clutch drone, and then from there you can steal claymore. Oh steal my air god! Jobs, some drones. There's so, so Mozzy can hack the hacking drone and then hack. Oh my god, bro! There's that, there's oh, like hack the, inception. So it's really a counter and counter synergy. Wow. Dude, listen, drone. guys, if I died to my own Claymore, I, you know what? No, I'm done running Claymores, actually. Everybody is done running Claymores. I'm done with that. I'm not going to die to my own Claymore. It navigates on the floor. Mozzie's so going to steal the drone. Because here's what's going to happen. Mozzie's going to steal the drone and then use it to hack one of our Claymores, and then I'm dead. I just know it's going to happen. You place jammers. You passively deny. Everyone's going to start playing Mozzie after this. You just have to be careful and place them in ways that she can't shoot them. The clutch drone can steal the jammer, and then it's going to disable the fender gadgets. Vigil's gadgets allows them to be close to drones, so obviously the clutch drone will not be able to see Vigil, which means that he can That's jump good. the drone and destroy it. Okay, so Vigil works like Vigil works. Players will be able to make Bravo shine the most when they repick into the separator. When you notice that there's Capcan, Milusi, yeah, that's gonna be Arunia, strong. Maestro, all of those. Oh, Aruni gates. Gadgets, well, oh my them. God! So Imagine running into your, your own gate. Guys, I might just have to retire some operators. Like, how am I gonna play Aruni or Capcan? All right, here we go. Anti cheat for console. Let's have a listen, guys. Let's have a listen. So on Siege, we have a problem where a lot Definitely. of people are using these little widgets called input spoofing devices, and they allow you to play with a keyboard and mouse on console. Yep. Now, along with toxicity and cheating, this is one of the biggest complaints that we get from our community. Definitely. And Honestly. We, heard you. we agree. It feels really unfair to play against other players when you have such they a said it. Advantage. They admitted and it. This is a problem that I know a lot of people are waiting for that. Console shooters have, especially the competitive ones. And there hasn't really been a reliable solution for this yet. In fact, the devices they're using are specifically designed to be undetectable. We wanted to build our own system that would sniff out mouse and keyboard players on console so that we could build a better picture of exactly who are using these devices. Well, that's good. And we call that system Mousetrap. We it's have a good been name. Really quiet about it's it, creative. but actually, it's been running in the background in shadow mode for several seasons. Wow. We've been gathering data and analyzing the results, and now we have a much better picture. We know. Exactly so all you Zim players out there, if you guys have been playing Zim secretly, your closet cheating on console with the M and K, they've already known about you. They've been collecting exactly data for seasons. They said. Spoofing when they were spoofing. We also know that at the highest ranks. Spoofers become much more common. Yep. Where they have the biggest advantage and the most to gain. It would have been really easy for us just to ban all those players, but we want Why to try they? something a little different. Okay. So what we're going to do it. is we're going to try and remove the advantage that they get from using one of these input spoofing devices. Starting in season eight, year 1.2, when we detect you spoofing, we're going to start adding extra latency to your inputs. Extra latency. It's going to start out really unnoticeable, but it's going to ramp up Ooh. over several matches and it will definitely be noticeable. Oh boy. Controller players will find that their disadvantage against mouse and keyboard players will be much reduced. Well, that's, to remove the that's penalty, good. Simply unplug your spoofing adapter and continue playing on controller. Wow. After a few Easy matches, fix. latency will be reduced and you'll be back to normal. We've worked really close. So listen, what do you guys think about that? He said that he he said he said himself they could have very easily went in and banned all the Zim or M and K on console players. Do you think that they should have taken that route? Do you think they should have just like banned everybody, or do you think that this is the right solution? Adding like input delay 
to the M and K itself. I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on it either way. To be honest with you, I don't play console, so I feel like I'm not really in the right position to talk about it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I'm interested. That accessibility group here at Ubisoft to make sure that we take the needs of disabled players into account. We have designed the feature anti toxicity so to use adaptive technology to access the game should not be affected. Oh, they're saying what's later. OK, however, if you are a disabled player and you feel like you've been unfairly penalized, there will be a QR code in the game that you can use to contact us. That's good. We will then I was wondering about that. I, w I was wondering how like how is the system going to work with people being like wrongfully affected by, it, you know, because we already see that with like Battle Eye on PC, which is the anti cheat for PC for any console players who don't know. It's the anti cheat on PC and it, it often wrongfully bans people. I actually, I don't want to say often. It really doesn't often happen, but still, it's, it's good. They thought of a way to, to prevent to this. So additionally, we will be updating our code of conduct for all players. Ooh. to say that using external devices to gain an advantage is not permitted wow so that's big experimental solution. very nice nobody in the industry has solved this problem yet right we're trying something new but it's not the final iteration you got to respect we that though to keep monitoring the data to update got to respect them trying new and things to continue to tune the penalties it's an evolving situation. We are committed to continuing to work on it to improve the fairness of Siege. The Mousetrap will be coming year eight, season 1.2. Season 1.2, interesting. The issue with the current reload system in Siege is that uh -oh. it doesn't reflect the reality that most players are pursuing. Reload, reload canceling. If someone's reloading, they are non-lethal, and I have opportunity to push that fight. In the right. live build of Siege right now, if you initiate a reload action, you can cancel it at any time. Yep. What that means it's going to be controversial. It's been removed from the weapon, and somebody starts pushing you, and you cancel that animation, and the magazine pops back in the weapon, and as long as it had ammunition, your weapon is again lethal. Yep. With Operation Commanding Force, you will no longer get the benefits of reload canceling. Ooh. And what I mean by that is once the magazine has cleared the weapon, it will not magically pop back in the weapon if you cancel that animation. Oh boy. Fact, it'll drop and then you'll have no magazine in your weapon. But if you had a little bit of ammunition left in your magazine, oh, you still have one in the chamber. My goodness. At the end of the day, it only takes one. Although oh. the objective here is consistency with the intro the clip and strategy of siege, which means. Wow, that's controversial. So what do you guys think about this? I'm gonna have to ask you guys a lot of questions here because there's so much coming with this new, this new year, year eight. I don't know. Honestly, I'm going to have to play with this for a few days to really test it. I'm about to play on the TTS after this uh, when I'm done recording this video. So I'm about to go record and give you guys my firsthand thoughts about that. So make sure you guys are subscribed for when that video comes out. I'm going to be going over all the changes in game and actually playing, give you guys gameplay on that. But honestly, I don't know how I feel about this so far. I understand both sides of the argument. I understand that some people want it the way that they're changing it to. And I understand some people like it the old way. Honestly, I'm down to try it. I'm down to try it. And it's purposeful. When a player initiates a reload action, you're committed to it. It's going to mess me. I'm going to die a lot because of this. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to hate it for the first week or two, I think. Use of the loadout that players already have, which is to use their secondary weapon if needed. Ultimately, it realigns our players' expectations with the game reality. Yeah, I think thinking about it, I, I think my opinion could change on this after I've actually played with it for a little while, but... Thinking about it, I think overall it's probably a good thing. It probably fits the theme of Siege. I feel like the, the new system they're going to probably makes the best sense, but it's going to be a little bit infuriating for the first week or two because I'm going to I'm gonna have that old reload cancel system in my head that I've been playing with for eight years now, and then they've changed it. So, so players, when they know this is what it is, though. You got to adapt and overcome, right? And an advantage in that situation. Right now, the game doesn't actually. Oh, with an that. LMG, that would be this rough. One of those updates that is actually affecting. Oh. Our of the game. It's an oh my thing. God. Be very careful when we make those changes, but we know That's that rough. this is the direction we want to go in to bring Siege to be more tactical, more purposeful, and more strategic than ever before. Cool. Zero is not in a bad spot right now, but it's true that his gadget can be a tricky one to use, as it's getting destroyed most of the times before being even used mainly due to the sound it makes. Is this zero rework? We are changing the Argus camera so that it will no longer auto-deploy to the other side of the wall once being attached. Oh, that's zero good. will now need to manually perform the perforation from inside the camera. And that's good. Any teammates can swap either side of the camera, but not perform the perforation. 
With these changes, we want the Argus camera to be a much more powerful intel tool, as well as being much more collaborative and improve the options and survivability of the gadget. We believe change. that these changes will make the gadget much more interesting and bring a new layer of strategy to Zero. In year seven, we did a big update to our attachments. So that's a rework, but I don't know about that. The goal here was to enhance the player choice, give you more options to play the way you want to and make the loadouts you want to use. Looking into the compensator and the muzzle brake is the same philosophy. We're just bringing those in line with some of the changes we started in year seven. For the muzzle okay. brake, we're going from 45% up to 50%. 5% jump. For the compensator, we're making an adjustment from 50% this is huge. to 35%. Listen, this is huge. So they're basically increasing the effectiveness of these barrels. That's what they're explaining right now. So what he's saying is the compensator will now go from reducing 15% of your horizontal recoil to now reducing 35% of it. At least that's the way I'm interpreting this. So it's basically they're buffing it from 15% to 35. So that's pretty huge. And I know Bikini was just tweeting about it on, on Twitter, how Ella and like the Bearing 9, a few of those like really bad horizontal recoil guns, uh, those operators with those guns, they might be a lot more viable now because of this change. And honestly, not a lot of people are talking about it. So this is, this is a big one, guys. One great feature that was introduced in year seven is the shooting range. And I highly recommend you go into there and test all this stuff out. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to test it. Yourself. I will As test always, it. with any balancing change or any update we do, we will be listening and monitoring the community feedback and continuing to find ways to empower you, the player, to live out the fantasy of being that elite operator. Siege is a highly tactical game with a lot of different strategies, depending on the operators, the maps, and the interactions of the gadgets. Really? We want to support new players on their Siege journey by adding the tools that allows them to learn how to play Siege and how to perform at their best in PvP. In Operation Commanding Force, we're introducing the Beginner Challenges. Okay. The beginner Challenges are a new progression tool which allows new players to progress and learn about the different facets of Siege. That's good. They can do this by every match that they play. They're actually progressing in these new challenges which are created into groups that we like to call Operator Specialties. Operator Specialties are a great way for our current players to teach their friends how to play Siege. Interesting. For example, you could... I'm going to pause real quick. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of letting him speak here and explain this because uh, to be honest with you guys, this is my first time like actually watching this at, at full length. I've seen like like bits and pieces of the patch notes on Twitter, but I didn't watch the reveal and I wasn't invited to invite to play it early. So honestly, I'm listening to this for the first time myself. So we talk about Habana as a breacher and this is how we're going to group the beginner challenges. Is interesting. Every time a newcomer plays a match, they'll be progressing their beginner challenges. I really they'll like see that. Which operator specialty they've been progressing, and as they do so, they'll unlock different rewards such as renown. That's very good. Or newcomer packs. That's so good because there's been like no incentive to like grind siege, I guess, because champ is so easy to hit. You've got like twenty thousand champs on console or something ridiculous. You've got like ten thousand on PC. It might be more. I don't even know. So yeah, it's been like, like ranked has felt like nothing to grind for. I feel like for like a lot of seasons, I feel like years now. So them adding challenges and, and like levels and you're able to rank up your operator or whatever, that is great. That's awesome. Additionally, players can unlock operators of that specialty. So for example, if you're playing- Oh, as that's cool. And doing well, you're progressing those challenges and you'll unlock another wow. operator to play as. That's really good. It will be really a motivator for new players to be able to progress towards a specific operator all while learning what that operator does yeah. in the game. Wow, that's great too. And and something I'm thinking about that this is going to help with is, is is just looking at the screen. This is really going to help like get you into your role, right? Cuz I know a lot of people like in Six Shot Academy or just, you know, over the course of my time doing YouTube and streaming, a lot of people have always asked me, you know, how do you find the role? Like what operator should I be playing? Like what role should I get into? And I feel like this is going to help out a lot because you can go and play these different operators. You can you can kind of read, you know, Intel provider, Trapper, Breach, et cetera, support, figure out like kind of the basis for what they do. And then if you like it, you like it and you progress through it. And I feel like this is, this is really gonna be, like you said, motivating for new players. All operators great. within Siege will now have an operator specialty assigned to them. You'll be able to refer to that when playing with other players, such as we already have a breacher, or can somebody bring an Intel? Operator? Oh, this wow. So you can have like tags next to your name or something. Is that what he's saying? So you can have like 
uh like a tag underneath your name where like you're a you're a breacher or whatever that's that's cool wow to use the language of siege to make the choices about which operator to play this is great guys to beginner challenges for new players it will replace the battle pass tile on the home menu our current players will be able to find it in the play menu by giving new players a progression tool that's been specifically designed for them we're able to reward players with items they can use immediately this is the first time we're unlocking the ability to play to unlock a specific operator within Siege. Yeah, that's Players awesome. Be informed how they're playing and be able to identify the type of role that they perform best within. Wow, great time to get into Siege, man. I wish they had all of these tools when I was first getting into Siege because this is awesome. Anti-toxicity. All right, let's see it. I'm very glad to announce that we will perform a new update toward the reputation penalty. This new update right. will be looking at everybody that is doing some disruption at the voice chat level it is man can we be honest guys i think the like reputation system is cool and the, like the your standing like your rank is cool but they need to fix that bro like i will not play the game for three days and then load up and i went down in like by two ranks or i went up it, like it just doesn't even make sense and also i have my voice chat disabled and my text chat disabled so it's like what could I be doing that's like affecting the reputation? Like I'm not, you know what I mean? Like really I don't understand. I got to work on this. Misconduct, hateful message. We want to reduce that. Players being detected by this new system will be muted by default to others. So okay. the people that still want to hear them will be able to unmute them. The yeah. goal of this new initiative is to reduce the impact of the top offender on other players. We also want to reduce Good. the case of misconduct and hateful message that you are facing. At the start, we will be only looking at the top offender, so a small population of players. They will be receiving a set of warnings, and when the penalty will be applied, it will last several matches. Later down the road, of course, we will continue to monitor this system, but also to expand it to everybody. All right, well, cool. So that was the changes that I think are coming like this season. So there's another video here, this one we could watch as well. And this is gonna be like changes coming to all of your eight. So I think the video we just watched, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure most of the changes there are coming this season. Whereas this video, there may be some things that are coming this season, but most of it, this is like the roadmap. This is them talking about what's coming over all of your eight. So the four seasons, over year eight, right? So we're gonna watch that now. All right, well, Frost is getting a rework that is gonna bring more opportunities in gameplay, but also more to the Huntress fantasy. Yeah, so as you can see, this is the season that we're in here, season one. This is, I believe, the season that we'll be going into. And then a lot of what they're talking about is gonna be in these three seasons. So the Frost rework that they're about to talk about right now, you can see is in season two. Uh, and that comes with a few other things they're going to get into the map rework consulate the permanent arcade playlist which i've been literally preaching for on twitter for like three years or something ridiculous like if you guys follow me on twitter which you should links in the description i've been like begging ubisoft for a, a permanent arcade playlist forever so i'm super happy about that but keep in mind that some of this isn't you know right now it's down the line what can you tell us there so yeah we're actually revisiting frost specifically her welcome mat and what that means is right now, many of our players can find themselves in a situation where they have been welcomed into, say, welcome mat, and then they're stranded and stuck. Well, again, about empowering yep. both sides of the fight here, players will be able oh to get boy. themselves up. What do you guys the think? Here, the catch here is that Just wait. when we talk about making any changes like this to try to remove frustration, we want to make sure that we're empowering both sides. So in this case, Frost will actually be able to... Do you hear them yelling BS in the back? <laughs> track you down because you will not be able to sprint. You will leave a blood trail and those defenders will still be able to get you. It'll still take time to get out of that trap, but she can still hunt you down. Yeah, so here we go. So basically what he's saying is after you after you get in the bear trap, you can pick yourself back up. But then for the rest of the rounds, well, first off, you're stuck on low HP. And then you're also going to leave behind this blood trail and you can't sprint anymore. So you're going to be really slow walking away. And you're leaving a very obvious trail for you know where you're going so i don't know 
honestly like all of these changes to be honest with you guys i really don't have an opinion on it either way i'm i'm down to just try it so this is kind of weird though like i don't know that sounds pretty cool it's really looking like you're taking the fantasy of it all in or guy gotta get in to season three because season three is bringing a, a new defender gadget new defender game. gadget in season what three can you tell us about this so we have a new defender secondary gadget coming to the game called the observation blocker and this thing is built around that pillar of siege which is intel this thing's and cool in the case of the defenders denying it from the attackers i saw this so on twitter observation tools will have to work a little bit harder to find out what that site setup is or what the defenders are trying to set up and pounce on the attackers with now with this uh you know this defender gadget can you tell us a little bit more about how it works exactly? Yeah, so you actually can take it and deploy it onto the floor. And when you do, it'll actually expand fairly far out. It'll cover a dory, but much bigger beyond that. Yeah, and so again, check this out. This thing's actually really cool. Being able to see through it. All right, sounds pretty cool. Now, uh, for this, which defenders, which operators are going to be targeted for this, Alex? So you can see it here. There's the, the crowd reaction. Can't see through the blocker. <laughs> And that they didn't know what it was at first. With operators but like see, the defenders Maestro, can still see through it. Zap a drone that doesn't know it's on the other side. Or I like this shot with Mozzie right here. Like Mozzie, who can be waiting on the other side of an observation blocker. This is cool. And then pounce on it and capture it. Working on these kind of synergies means that these defenders will make good use of the observation blocker. All right. So tell us about the shield. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for that one. There's definitely going to be some cool strats that you can do. I feel like they were kind of showing someone playing like really close behind it. I feel like that might happen depending on like the spot that you're in. Like right here, it makes sense. There's not much room for them to back up. But I feel like a lot of a lot of teams in pro league or just like really high high level players, they're they're going to think of like some crazy stuff with this that like you know we just haven't thought of like. I don't know. I'm just really excited to see it. All right. So tell us about the shield rework. Shield remap. We're oh, reworking shields. You know what? I honestly, I thought this was coming season one. I didn't know this was coming all the way in season four. Man, I'm kind of bummed now because I wanted to try this. Fundamentally. So what we're doing there is we're looking at that the the dance that we see in the game where you're on. You're trying to melee the shield to get a shot at the feet and stuff like that. That doesn't feel like you're an empowered elite operator. It doesn't feel tactical. So we're looking into that and revisiting that. This idea where right now you're hip firing and you're missing every shot, or you hip fire and get that lucky headshot, again, doesn't feel very good on either side of that shield. Yeah. So we're looking into that and adjusting everything. In the case, we're actually bringing the gun in behind the shield. So that I feel like it's pretty cool. More defended and more able to work with your team better. It's kind of weird. Behind the shield. It looks trippy looking. And also, but it's cool. Turn your head. <laughs> okay so here's my question with turning your head right if like when you turn your head like this is it like a button you press and then you can like turn your head is it like your lean keys like are you hitting the lean keys to do this or do you just like turn your map turn your mouse and that's what it does because if so that's like weird <laughs> i feel like it's qe right it has to be qe this looks but cool you're though. Not done yet, Joshua. So, so any adjustment we do to any operator or gadget, we have to think about both sides of that fight. So yes, this is making shields a force to be reckoned with, but it, when you face a shield, you will have more tools in your arsenal to be able to handle it. So at both sides, you can be confident, but I recommend you keep them at range. Oh, he just hopped in. Oh boy. So our so, has been doing- So is that like, is that a blitz thing or is that a shield thing now? I think that's just a shield thing. Where it, when you melee, it just knocks you back. Go back. Range. It's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. So I don't know how I feel about that. I I think. Ah, uh, I don't know. That's just that's just strange. Amazing job on the console front, and with and specifically the aiming controls, we can see that with the advanced aiming that we've already released. It means I'm gonna have to remake my my blitz guide in Six Shot Academy. Oh boy. Year seven. But going beyond that, we're bringing presets. So multiple oh, this is cool too. You, to play you guys playing a console, you guys will like this. But going beyond that, full controller remap. So the shooting range is growing. Oh, Last this I'm super excited for. You customize your I've been waiting for this for years. Check the damage that you do. We're adding a completely dedicated lane now where you can customize, Wait. aim, warm up before you jump into the match. This is something Wait that you can it. only do outside of the game. Now Here you we go. 
get your aim labs in of siege all of this testing oh my god you guys know that i've like i've made so many videos talking about aim trainers and i always say aim trainers are good but the problem with them is that you're never going to be able to convert your sense one to one exactly you're never going to have like that that feel of that game's engine right so now that they literally made aim labs in siege from what i can see like that's huge like this is like insane for aim training All i'm right, so Alex, excited for that let's talk about season two where are we going so i know we've been to sweden a couple times on the esports side we're officially announcing a swedish operator season two very cool I think they kind of like already showed us all that, but consulate rework. Here we go. Big changes. Dude, I'm so excited for this. Consulate is such an L nowadays. This is one of our oldest maps. We yep. had to rebuild it from the that's ground crazy up. looking. The way that the bomb sites behave, that's, the variety that's, in the way that you can attack That last shot was where Londes would be. It. Also, oh another my God. really important thing too is for attackers to have a safe av I'm like struggling to even like figure out where they are. It's so different. You to approach the building. That's crazy. All of this is coming oh, wow. season two. The world team Raj looks similar. Incredibly hard to deliver it. That was good. Again, one of our oldest maps. On the tech side, we had to completely redo it. It's one of our biggest reworks we had to do on the back end. So we hope Hopefully it's the good. players enjoy it. How is Defender AI Playlist going to create that opportunity for them to learn? So that's right. The Defender AI Playlist play is coming out really targeting beginner players because let's be honest, regardless of the rework we're working on for Quick Match, y'all are scary in some of those lobbies. So it's important <laughs> that we give people a place that they can go it's in. calling out all the tryhards and casual. And experience the game. And for this, like, how does it work exactly? Because this isn't just like your typical bot. Yeah, yeah so this is weird. That's right. As Chris mentioned, these are actually AI, machine learned uh, AI, which essentially we're feeding them player data, which means they react and act as they should. They'll go ahead and set up a site and reinforce it in a default setup that makes sense. They'll open up rotations. They'll place gadgets where you'd expect the That is out. insane. So we You know, I, I, I think, um, I forget his name, uh, the guy in the middle here, I think later he says that they plan on like supporting siege for the next like 10 years or whatever and i made a tweet about that and how that's like super motivating but like just just like listening to the changes they're talking about like they're literally building like machine learning ai bots that you can play against that do like meta site setups and pick like meta opera and stuff like that's like insane so honestly the future of siege right now just looks so good default setup that makes sense they'll open up Permanent space where you can try permanent arcade playlist. Here it is. Let's go. Game. And when it launches, we'll I love the game modes. Arcade one through five. We add a little extra to it. I know. I know it's a work. All right, progress. let's get in. I'm just being an ass. Season three. We're going down the list of seasons. Here we go. Let's do it. Oh, no, we're actually going up. That's right. Where are we heading in season three? So we're heading back to a familiar country. It is South Korea. Okay, Quick Match 2.0. So we're actually going in and reworking what Quick Match is. So what that means is right now when you go into unranked or ranked, the stakes are pretty high. And then Quick Match, we all know the stakes aren't quite as high. So, you know, it plays very differently. So looking into that to make sure that we can have an experience that is fun. What stakes are there in unranked? For people to actually take a break well, from the point of it was there's no stakes. Fun to do with their squad. Maybe you didn't do so well in ranked tonight. Go, go blow off some steam in quick, in quick Match. But again, remove some of those frustrations, get you into the core of Siege and faster. That's where we're going. I feel like yeah, isn't wouldn't you just play unranked for that? That isn't he just describing unranked? We have one more season to go, right? Oh boy! Everyone's excited for this one. You have to end with season four with a bang, and that means that we are not only getting a new location but a new map as well. Alex. Oh, new map. Very nice. To. You can see it already. We're going to visit Portugal. Are they going to show map four. screenshots? Please show With map screenshots. Map, we'll be looking at a map that's actually all the booze. What? Tied to the story of the Why game. Why are people booing? And 
the team is working really hard on working on something that you haven't seen before in the maps you've Bro, the R6 community is crazy. People will complain about no new maps and then they announce a new map and there's Played booing. I don't so get it. The reputation system is in beta right now. We have everything where you start seeing the penalties assigned to players who are disruptive. You also oh, have a place cool. where you can report. Like the Overwatch system? We also system? want to celebrate the wins in Siege 2. We want to commend our teammates who are doing a good job, making a great call or a great play. This and cool. actually have that positive reinforcement in Siege as well. Combination system? One thing SI has taught me the Siege community loves to be supportive of one another. Wow. So you can I know see the amount of thumbs up you get. This commendation system. That's cool. Siege has been around for a long time. New players are competing with very competent and experienced players that are playing with our game every single day. This can be overwhelming for new players. Yeah, see, people don't realize this, but what, like why I was saying the all the changes and additions they're bringing for like onboarding new players. The reason I was like so hyped about that is because like it's a a serious issue that siege has like it's so hard to learn siege if you're a new siege viewer you've never watched siege pro league before and you go to watch it it's so much more difficult to get into than something like csgo or valorant right it's just so much more complicated there's all these different floors people are looking through them in the spectator view sometimes floors or roofs are just invisible and like a new player has no idea what the map is supposed to look like so it's just so confusing so it's really difficult. It, it always has been for Siege to like grow and like blow up massively. But them working on you know, changing that is great. Depth, and new players don't have the tools to learn how to play Siege correctly. Exactly. In year eight, we really want new players to practice through play. We want them to experience operators, test out their gadgets, and navigate maps. In season one, we're bringing beginner challenges, a new progression tool for newcomers, yeah, we went which over allows this. them to learn how to play Siege, as well as the speed, the movement, the quantity of targets, as it's well just as the aim lab thing again. different element of Siege, whether that's basics like destruction or verticality, droning and repelling, oh, this and reinforcements is cool. and barricades. We See, this is great. This is uh, sort of what Overwatch does as well. Reward 10 new ops. For we're like in the, the, in like the tutorial for Overwatch. I think Tracer like has you uh, follow her around and, and do various uh, tutorial things. For players upon yeah, completion cool. of those tutorials. Five what's if they're doing something similar? Five on defense. And in season four, we'll be bringing the Defender AI playlist, a safe place to teach your friends how to play Siege and to learn new operators and new maps. That's cool. We're really excited about this new AI playlist. It uses a machine learning algorithm, which is informed by our current players playing today. In this oh playlist, boy. you'll play as an attacker against a defender AI. You're going to have a bunch of AI just quick peeking. That's what's going to happen. The next steps for us afterwards would be to add the attacker AI playlist in a future update. Gadget oh. interaction. This is a system that hasn't changed in a long time. This is when you deploy. All right, I saw this on Twitter and I didn't understand. So I'm about to just like lock in and, and listen to what he's saying Gadget, here. Gadget, when you pick it up, when you throw it, we're looking at improving this specifically starting with the gadget pickup and the diffuser pickup to make sure it's a lot more reliable and a lot less frustrating for players. Beyond right. that, in year eight, we're looking at gadget deployment. You have deployable shields. You have that little dance of trying to get it in the right spot. We want to make sure that's a better experience for players. That's good. Players out there that want to take advantage of- Okay. No, so see, it's, it's not that I misunderstood it. I, I thought that he was like trying to explain like the steps they were taking to improve it but they didn't explain it so i guess they're just working to improve it that's fair they don't have anything to show on it just yet but i was expecting like i was watching those clips i was like trying to like see a difference but it just says live build this the whole content time. we covered and more well guess what the year eight passes pass back is back and with more information on that is business strategy director muhammad ben hanada all right i don't think you guys want to hear too much about the this it's it's literally just this this is all it is. You're going to get, if you buy the year eight pass, you'll get all four year eight battle passes, a 10% store discount for all of your eight, 14 day early access to the new operators. So two weeks early, and then you'll also get an ACE skin, I guess. So that's, that's what it is. And there's also the premium pass where you can get all four year eight battle passes, 20 battle pass tokens per season, 10% store discount, two week early ops, uh, Ace and Thunderbird bundle. So I guess the premium pass would be the one I'm gonna get here. I I, I didn't realize they made the, the these like two separate. I mean, you're really just paying for like 
an extra Thunderbird skin, but whatever. So that's that's the new year pass that they're bringing new back. Tone that we want to set for the game, and I don't know if anybody saw our cinematic from year eight. It was pretty good. You guys should watch it. Is the world that we want to build where there are real stakes for our operators and there's real stakes too for our players where they can really get invested and have a good time. Now with all that said, what does that mean for the future of Siege? Yes. So we're already moving up to year eight of Siege and we are so committed to this game. We're already looking at the next 10 years See? of Siege. That's great. We know. We'd love to hear that. Invested so much time, so much love into this. W game. siege in the comments, that guys. It's coming back. We're coming it. back. We are here to stay, and we love you all. Oh hey yeah. Everyone, I'm Nicholas, Chief Innovation Officer at Blast, and we're very excited. All right, we're probably not too concerned with the rest of that. I think they're talking about uh, esports stuff. But listen, guys, that has been all the changes coming to the new season. I forget what it's called. I'm sorry. As well as uh, Year Eight, the new year for Siege. Honestly, things look great. I'm so, so excited for Siege. All the changes they're introducing so far have seemed pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Let me know what you guys think on year eight and the new season in the comments down below. Also, make sure to check out Six Shot Academy if you guys are looking to improve at Siege. Perfect place to do so. But with all that being said, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are excited for the next year of Siege. Hope you guys subscribe. Be along for the journey. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.